Hi writers, I'm Lauren Sapala. Today I'm talking about what happens when your story goes dark. Now what do I mean by that? Usually when I say that to people, your story going dark, they're like, oh, you mean when you're writing really dark fiction or some controversial topics come up. Um, that is one way of your story going dark, but that's not what I'm talking about today. Today I'm talking about when you get that story idea, you maybe you even haven't even started writing yet, and you get all this inspiration and enthusiasm, and you sit down and you write the first third, or you write the first fourth, or maybe even just the first section of your novel or your story, and it feels like it's just pouring out of you, and you can see it really clearly, and you can hear the characters talking, and it's all really fun. And then suddenly, it just goes dark. The characters stop talking, you can't see what happens next. And try as you might, you really just can't see. You might try to brainstorm, you might try to sit down and write down plot points, um, you might try to rationally think about what happens next, but you can't see anything. So this is what I'm talking about when I say your story goes dark. All of a sudden you cannot see the path ahead. You cannot see which way the storyline is going to go. You can't see what the characters are going to do next. So what usually happens in this instance when the story goes dark is the writer freaks out. The writer almost always takes this to mean that I've lost it, it's not coming back, the story's gone, I did something wrong, and the story fizzled out. I killed it, or it wasn't a good idea to begin with, there wasn't enough substance to it to be a full story, so it's, it's kind of dead in the water, right? Like it's not going to go anywhere. Um, so at this point the writer either gives up and they're like, okay, I'm going to just trash that, I'm going to scrap that idea completely, and they usually feel really bummed about it, really sad, or they go harder into anxiety and try to control. And they're like, no, I just need to sit down and really brainstorm what happens next. Maybe I can read some writing guides. Maybe I can look up some, you know, the most popular story arcs or the hero's journey. That's what it's going to be about. And they start trying to push and force and shove the story in a direction and into a little box in which the story does not want to go. The story does not want to be there and the story does not want to be in that little box. The characters don't either. So at this point, it goes from being um, a process of fun and excitement and inspiration. I'm writing this story and it's pouring out of me to, I can't think of anything. Um, I'm really scared that I ruined it. It feels forced. I feel full of dread. I can feel this heavy energy all over everything and I don't really know what happened. I don't know what went wrong. Why did the story go dark on me? The problem is not that the story went dark. That's actually a natural part of the creative cycle. That's a natural part of the creative cycle for any story. Stories will go dark sometimes. The problem is that the writer freaked out. The writer didn't know what was happening. Either the writer didn't have enough experience, this might be their very first book, their very first story, or the writer has high anxiety. And although they've completed something before, every time this happens, it kicks their anxiety into high gear and they start really trying to clamp down with the control mechanisms. And usually these writers will have this kind of like checkered past of stories that they've done this before, where they're like, I've tried to control everything, it went off the rails, I tried to push harder, the whole thing fizzled out. So what do you do when your story goes dark? What's happening when the story goes dark? If I'm saying it's not a problem, then what is really happening here? So when the story goes dark, the story is in a rest period for whatever reason. With all things, all life forms on earth, and yes, your story, it's a life form. It's a living, breathing thing that's separate from you. You're not controlling it. You're not making it up. It's not this thing that you own. It's a living, breathing organism. It's a life form. All life forms have rest periods. Human beings sleep at night. The tides go in, the tides go out. The sun goes down, the sun comes up. Um, you know, it's spring and summer and the flowers are in full bloom and then we go into autumn and winter. Things hibernate, things go dormant for a while. That has to happen for anything to follow a path of natural growth and development. There has to be rest periods. So when your story goes dark, it is almost all of the time not gone. Like 99% of the time, it's not gone. It's resting or you need a rest. The characters need a rest. Somebody who is involved in this creative process needs a rest. Now maybe you need a rest because some other things popped up in your life. 
um, you know, your relationship is going through some difficult times, you had sudden job loss, you had to move, an illness, some big life thing came in and demanded all of your creative energy because that happens with life transitions. We have to use our creative energy to get through them, to be resourceful, to adjust and change course. And so you weren't able to put your creative energy into the book or the story right now. It got diverted into these other channels. That's fine. It will come back. Sometimes you're fine. Your life is fine. Nothing crazy is going on, but the story itself needs time to ripen. You've written out everything in you that was ripe, that was ready to be picked off the tree. You've picked all the fruit off the tree. The tree needs a little bit more time to grow some more apples and to let those apples ripen. When you're trying to force it and push it, it's like you're going out to the tree and you're ripping off these green apples and you're like, I'm going to make pie out of these. I don't care. And then the pie is horrible because the apples weren't ripe. Your story needs time to ripen, just like any living, growing thing. So if you give the story, if you give yourself or you give the characters the time that they need, the time that it needs, the time that you need to rest, to recuperate, to recharge, to ripen, the life force will come back when it's ready. Just like spring comes back every year, just like the sun comes up every morning, it will come back when the cycle comes around again. But you have to be patient. You are not the one who's going to get to set that time schedule. All you can do is follow it. So as a creative being, as an artist, as a writer, that's your job is to follow the creative cycle to the best of your ability, not to try to make it move faster, not to try to force it and not to freak out when it happens as it naturally will. And you think you should be producing all the time and this should be in bloom all the time and things should always be ready to be picked off the tree. That's not how it works. If you can step back and you can allow the story to do what it needs to do. And that might take two months. That might take three months. You know, it's not usually going to take over that. It's not like you're going to be waiting around for five years, but it might take its own sweet time to ripen for that next piece to ripen. If you can step back and allow that to happen, things are going to start to flow again. Everything is going to be way easier. And you're going to feel just like you did when you started full of enthusiasm, full of excitement, full of inspiration. The story is pouring out of me. I can't get it down fast enough. Uh, if you resonate with this, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel. I talk about writers. I talk about the writing process, intuitive writers, intuitive people, what it all means. If this is you, please subscribe to my channel and please subscribe to my newsletter. I send out all sorts of fun stuff for writers and intuitive people as well. And if this is your experience and you feel comfortable sharing, please drop a comment in the comments box below. Most of the people who visit my channel are INFJs and INFPs and we love stories and we love hearing about people. So there are people who will really benefit from your story and your experience. I hope this was helpful for all of you. That's it for today. Thanks everyone.